guys. I'm going to just uh, open up this control panel. And I think we're going to start first to see if we can get that shaker motor running rather than working on the monitor first because the monitor, I just feel like the monitor is going to take longer to get uh, all set. Plus, I would like to get this bezel off so that um, I can clean the glass and make sure that's not contributing to the dimness issue that we have. So OutRun uses uh, security bits, let me see, like that. I'm not really getting that too good, but um, we just bought a set on Amazon uh, for like 10 bucks. It came with like 100 uh, different security bits. So, you know, that'll certainly come in handy. I think glanced over the manual and I believe it's one, two, three screws to remove to open up this control panel. And this screw here is different. Uh, it's just like a hex head. So I don't, I would imagine that's supposed to be the same as these two over here. So that was probably something that an operator did at some point. And this security bit actually will fit uh, this hex head, but let's try to do this right so we don't strip anything. panel coming loose. Oh, here we go. By the way, that first security bit was a T40 security bit. So these all feel like they're captive. I don't think they're supposed to be. I wonder if they have a uh, knot on the other side. All right, yeah, these all screw in the nuts on the other side, it looks like. So, I'm not sure how they really expect you to remove them with one person. It kind of seems like you're using someone back there. Okay, as you see, I did get the screws out and got this opened up. Basically just had to go to the back and remove the nuts by hand. This one on the right that was the incorrect uh, nut was giving me some trouble because they, both sides were spinning. Uh, this hole looks like it's a little bigger than it should be, so maybe that's why. Maybe that bolt was just a little loose in there. Uh, oh, it's no big deal though, we got it taken care of. So looking at this, um, the big gears look pretty good. Yeah, they look perfect actually, just you know, dirty from grease and stuff. Uh, but this little gear here, you can see that, this one right here. Is cracked so that will have to be replaced sooner rather than later uh, I'll have to look into that I don't know if I should go to the trouble to replace it now or just wait till it actually does fail um, probably should replace it now because I mean why not those broken teeth uh, we'll definitely hit the other gear and it's going to cause problems. So as far as the motor, it is connected. Um, now what's strange to me is that every OutRun motor that I've seen, not that I've seen a ton of them, but I've been looking at them on Google Images and stuff just to compare. Every other one that I've seen has the power connections on the sides here where these, uh, where the screw is. So. Um, I'm not sure why it has the power connections on the bottom, but they are intact as far as I can see. So I'm going to have to do some sleuthing here to figure out 
why that motor is not working. Okay, so we have red and black from the motor and kind of hard to follow through this bundle of wires here. Uh, I believe it's this red here. It's attached to another red. I believe this green and red are the connectors for the motor right here. You see we have a black here connected to a green. Uh, so that would be the only black in this bundle and the only green in the bundle. So this is the connector. So I think I'm going to first start off by cleaning this out and uh, you know, we'll try all the simple stuff first and if the simple stuff doesn't work, then we'll move on to tracing voltages and stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to try some deoxid. This stuff, uh, people swear by this, but I have to say I've never actually had it fix anything, but this connector does look awfully dirty, so... You know, we'll see what the contacts look like inside. Yeah, they actually look pretty okay to me. Let's see. Yeah, they don't look too dirty or anything, but... You know, we'll give it a little squirt. Just see if that helps at all. And we'll go from there. And this stuff obviously is made for cleaning contacts. It doesn't hurt electronics or anything. Just give that a minute. All right, it's been about a minute since I sprayed that stuff. And we're going to fire the cabinet up and see if we have any improvement. Just uh, thread one of these guys in loosely to hold this up a little bit. No, still nothing, guys. So, as usual, the easy fix uh, didn't work out for us, but that's okay. We'll move on. We'll trace some voltages and stuff. And uh, first comes the worst, you know, if the motor is just done for, uh, we can definitely source another one. So, not a huge deal there. Uh, I'm going to do some research and then I'll pick this video back up um, once I know what I'm looking for and everything. Okay guys, I think I may have found something. I'm doing some research on the shaker motor. And I believe that this cabinet should be set in up slash cockpit mode, which would be, I believe it's dip switch B, one on, two off. As you can see... One and two are both on, so I'm going to flip that two to off. Let's see if that gives us any difference. All right, let's just coin this up and see if that dip switch made any difference. Perfect, so our motor is working just with a simple dip switch adjustment. All right, perfect. Now we'll move on to fixing that monitor.